You know how to work those, right? North Carolina State beat Marquette. What did they lose? Yeah, you have a lot. Oh, it's still six minutes to go. Jesus and the narrator have so much to do with each other.
Check, check. All right. Hello, welcome to the village. We're going to get started with a little recorded music, and then afterward we're going to read a corporate prayer of confession together before we get started in our reading of the Gospel of John.
We're going to read this confession together this evening. Christ Jesus, we come before you to acknowledge your death on the cross and to confess our need of you. You are the suffering servant, bearing the wounds of those lost in sin. You are the innocent lamb, given to free the captive slave. You are the want shepherd, calling home those who wander. You are the triumphant king, who has come to take his throne. We are lost in sin, slaved in the brokenness of this world. And we wander like sheep, choosing our own way, the way of death. Yet we confess with Mary that you know our names and speak to our hearts. We confess with Peter that you have the words of life. We confess with John that we are loved by you. We confess with the centurion that you, you are the Son of God, the Christ, the King. Amen. A word of explanation. We're going to be reading through the Gospel of John, chapters 16 through 19. Uh, we have our readers here in this row right here, and uh, these are all the people who will be reading along as various characters in the story. Um, if you could advance the slide one more. So, you can follow along on the screen. You're going to be able to see all the words that are being read, but um, it's going to be cool to get a little bit of characterization, a little dramatization as we go from our various readers. However, you're going to be asked to participate as well. So if you see highlighted yellow congregation, that means you, each of you, all of you, all of us. So that's your part. That's our part to read together. Um, and you may see leading up to it in boldface type who you are playing at that point as the congregation. So you may be part of the crowd, the Jews, Jewish leaders. You may be different people as we go along. But please read together as we get to those points. Um, and hopefully all of you now have a baggie of different things. Maybe not literally all of you. If you're a child, your parent may have that, and your parent will decide how much or how little you participate in all of that. But uh, if you've got your baggies, if you don't have your baggie, then maybe raise your hand right now, and hopefully we can get one too. So we need an extra one for Hannah up front here. Yeah, Hannah and Lee and Anna. So whoever's got baggies. Baggies, baggies. <laughs> we're working on it. Okay, well, while we work on it, Jesus has a lot to read in John chapter 16, so we're going to get started. Uh, so what uh, we're reading immediately following the Passover feast, which we sometimes refer to as the Last Supper, where Jesus washed his disciples' feet. He predicted that one of his disciples named Judas would betray him, and he predicted that Peter would deny him three times. And we're going to see some of that come to pass as we read through and participate this evening. He tells them he is going away, and he gives them final instructions, and then we pick up here in chapter 16. I have much more to say to you. Am I on? The light is on. It's coming through the speakers. Okay. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. In a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. What does he mean by saying in a little while, you'll see me no more? And then after a little while, you'll see me. And because I am going to the Father, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Are you asking one another what I meant 
when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language. But I will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe? A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Oh. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and I kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may, brought, that they may be brought to complete unity. 
Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want that those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and I will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may, myself may be in them. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now G Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus knew all that was going to happen to him. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Inside your bag, you'll find a silver coin. Take your coin, come up front, and throw it in the garbage can. Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave to me. You gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detach detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Jesus, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. <laughs> 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 
Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? If I said something wrong, testify <coughs> as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, then why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself, so they asked him, You aren't one of this... What? You aren't one of his disciples too, are you? I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of a man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment a rooster began to crow. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now, it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them. What charges are you bringing against this man? Take him yourself and judge him by your own law. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace and summoned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Your own people and chief priest handed you over to me. What is that you have done? My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You're a king then. You say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there. I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? Now, Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again. And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and to the Jews gathered there. Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know what I find, that I find no basis for a charge against him. 
Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Here is the man. The chief priests and their officials saw him. Crucify! Crucify! You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you realize I have the power either to free you or to crucify you? You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who's handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king. Shall I crucify your king? Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There, they crucified him. And with him, two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. So this uh, next morning of the service, it's going to take a little while, but uh, I'd like to have you take out the index card or piece of an index card that's in your, your baggie. There are extras up front if you need more or you didn't get one, um, and pencils as well. And you can write out anything that you would like to confess, any sins that you feel like Jesus has paid for, and I invite you to come up and, after folding your card in half, nail it to the cross that's up here on the table. We have some hammers and some nails to do that. Um, and after tonight, we're going to take down uh, these index cards and dispose of them. So no worry that anyone will be reading them later. Also, we have communion up front, which Pastor Eric is preparing. So before all of this, Jesus was celebrating the Last Supper with his disciples, and he broke the bread at the Passover meal, and he gave thanks for it, and he said to his disciples that the bread was his body and that they should eat of it. And he did a similar raising of a glass of wine at the Passover meal, and he gave thanks for it, and he said that this was his blood shed for the forgiveness of sins as a new covenant. And so we enact and participate in his death for the forgiveness of our sins whenever we take the bread and drink the wine. So I invite you, after you've nailed your index card to the cross to likewise come and remember Jesus in a way that we do a little more often by taking a bit of the bread off of a loaf of bread and dipping it in the wine or the juice. And we've got some music that we'll play as we do all of this.
be afflicted here and rejoice in his name. Let the righteous cry out to the Lord who hears them. Though there have been lies, darkness and pain, you are close to my broken heart. You alone. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, The what chief. I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments so this is what the soldiers did near the cross of jesus stood his mother his mother's sister mary the wife of clopas and mary magdalene jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby Woman, here is your son, John, here is your mother. From that time on, 
this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus spoke. I am thirsty. I am thirsty. A jug of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. Jesus received the drink. It's your turn. It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. They will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jewish leaders, with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Then they 
So this uh, last thing in your bag probably requires just a little bit of explanation. Um, there are two new potting, um, what would we call them? Planters, planters. My gardener has spoken about this now. Um, so there are two new planters on either side of an older planter that we had a bunch of succulents in. Um, so as you go out the exit door, the double doors that you came in to the building through, turn to your left as you go out. Oh, you moved them out? Okay, all right. They'll be very obviously in your way as you go towards your car. Um, and what we would like you to do is take out your seeds that are part of your baggie that you have, and we'd love for you to sprinkle some seeds in either one of the planters. Whole lot of symbolism involved in tonight. If you want the rest of the story, come worship with us on Easter. Because Christ did not stay in the grave. And on Good Friday, it, it appears like a scandal, a defeat. But we know that's not true. It was really a triumph. So please, come worship on Easter. Worship the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. We'll be meeting together here at this building at 10 a.m. and then at 5 p.m. and we'll have a soup supper after on both services. I guess I will send you out with God's blessing. Please receive God's parting blessing. May the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.